Well, it's kind of getting in the way. <laughs> Fucking gravity. <laughs> your, to- your tooth like is it? <laughs> it's like a sword. This is, <laughs> this is, this is a, uh, one of those. <laughs> is that a skewer? Okay, it's pretty. It's a skewer that I cut so that I could put the olives on here. It's really like kebabs, picks. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Yes. In here, so I believe my first question was who you, the way too early to tell national champion of 2024. I mean, Back to the docket. Yeah. Prediction? Yeah, prediction. Who do you think is going to win it all? And then we'll go, and then we'll go league by league. I think UCLA is head, shoulders, feet, and fingers above everybody else. Unfort- I mean, it just it is what it is. That's not how that expression works. <laughs> uh. It can be. No. And toes? You had to throw the toes in? Yeah, toes was a weird one. <laughs> so it was like that. Nah. Back to fingers. Uh. Oh, man. I mean, they, they didn't lose anybody, really, right? No. no. They lost Norris, but he's he was kind of in rotation. But they got Hirsch. They got Hirsch still. They so. got they got Hirsch. So so obviously they're obviously reload. They're reloading. <laughs> Duh. Um, yeah, I mean because you have David still on the. I mean it's the same left. It's yeah, the same. it's just. Anybody, Libero. Anybody, Libero. They, they I want to hear Libero. somebody that doesn't have UCLA winning it. Long Beach people, Where? right? Hawaii people and Hawaii, Long Beach I mean, people. Hawaii people are for sure gonna. They know UCLA is legit, but they're gonna have. They're high hopes. They, they still got some pieces. I mean, sorry. I, I mean, obviously, yeah. UCLA is the front runner. No doubt. In my eyes. It, who was that? Eyes- Dork? How about your eyes? They didn't lose anybody. They won last year. That's usually yeah. a good recipe. I really, yeah. I really <laughs> wish there was a hot take for this. <laughs> no. Hot take. All right. Uh, UCLA is still good. Uh, dang. <laughs> Nobody's going to be like, hey, have you Damn seen that off. new podcast where they all rank <laughs> UCLA number one? <laughs> This is amazing. <laughs> we need guys, more clickbait, guys. These guys are edgy. <laughs> Someone take a chance. We have to listen to this. All right, let's go to the league winners, please. Oh, league winners. Yeah. Let's go league winners. We got MPSF. So we got UC- you guys are going to go UCLA there. Sure, fine. Neva? Uh, oh, Big West. Yeah, let's go Big West. I think Big West is the most interesting, for sure. They've got the most, the most depth, I believe. No, like, clear head and shoulders team above. Who's setting for Long Beach this year? Knife uh, still? Knife, yeah. I mean, I think Tread is good. Hawaii Tread, yeah. Freshman. And I think he'll be freshman of the year. That's a later on question. I don't care. <laughs> I think he'll be freshman of the year, but I don't, I don't think that Long Beach has as many like stellar pieces, maybe. Okay. They are super I deep. like I like Voss more than you do. Voss in the middle. I like Voss a lot. No, I don't get me wrong. You I think like Voss? Is Why do you hot. hate Voss? He doesn't think he's great. Now the Hawaii the Hawaii fans are now going to listen just because I say hot take. You're welcome. Do not hate Voss. I'm I think Voss is very very good. I think Voss is the type of middle that can take over a game. Not think he's just like another middle. I think he's a very good middle. I think Merrick McHenry is a middle that can take over a game. Like, okay. Across the board. I think Merrick McHenry and his should serve, be his in legit. contention for player of the year. <laughs> yeah, m- m- I think Merrick would be my top middle. But what I'm going to for Big West, I like Irvine has so much. I'm very interested in Irvine, and I love Niff. But Niff will always do some weird stuff with his lineups, if, which is not a necessarily a bad thing. But if he can string it together at the right time at the end, I could totally see – Irvine winning the tournament. Did you watch any of the Georgia Mason? I one? did. H- Hillier is legit. It was a. It looked like a Hillier show. He was playing around with a bunch of different stuff. So he had like, he had Flexen who transferred from Masters on oh, the left, yeah. on the right, and in the middle. And literally played all three positions. Um, so they really, yeah, you could tell they like want to get him on the floor because he's big. Um, they had Max, the uh, NorCal boy, was playing on the right and was. Pretty decently effective. Um, Connor Dom, our Beta Bay boy, st- they kind of used him. They started him in the middle. They'd back rotate him. He'd serve first. They'd sub him out for a middle, and then they'd bring him back in at the end. So he ended actually like playing middle at the end of some sets because they were doing this like s- some creative NIF stuff. But they did end up losing <laughs> that match to George Mason. 
So I'm I'm interested to see on Irvine if they can like progress because they've got some interesting pieces. I think Nitch is just like picturing giving a speech on like why weird shit works because if you commit to weird shit for long enough, it's gonna work <laughs> at some point. <laughs> people figure it out. Just I like, mean, hey. I love the idea of like people who can do everything mm-hmm. to a certain point. And by a certain point, I mean, like, af- right after 18 open, we don't do that anymore. And, like, m- setters play setter, and middles oh, play yeah, middle, yeah. and outsides play outside. And oh, yeah. He's just looking for all-around volleyball players. Yes. Right, yeah. I mean, that showed in what he did last year. And I night. think that there are very few players that can do stuff like that. Like, Micah is, is uh, not Micah. Ma. Yeah, yeah Micah yeah. Ma is one of them that can, like, you can hit and set, and, like, we have to use you at both things because you're that good at it, whatever. Micah Christensen is the same way. But like, uh, but like, there are such few players like that, mm. and I don't think that like every middle should be a setter and every sh- setter should be a middle. Personally, sure. it's just my personal opinion. I'm gonna go with Irvine. That's my that's my big West pick. Good for you. They're gonna they're gonna start off <laughs> slow and weird, and they're gonna finish strong. I think they have the best player in the Big West. Who? Who here? Yes. Yeah. I like Long Beach. Long Beach. That's the steady answer. Yeah. <laughs> It, I mean, just so deep, returning a lot of the same guys. I mean, they need to set the ball better. They need to hit the ball on the right side better. But, like, lefts and middles are strong for them. Mason will be good in the back. I think Irvine probably does too much weird stuff, but it's one of those teams where, like, if they get hot at the right time, yeah. like last year, yep. like, great. Like, they should be in the tournament kind yep. of conversation. And then, Who's hosting this year? By great. The way. That's a great question. I feel Probably like it's Hawaii. Hawaii. I think it's Hawaii. Which, which immediately gives Hawaii a, an advantage there. Great. I'm picking Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> we have our first hot take. <laughs> Shoot, actually, yeah. I think Hawaii is Classic actually, equation. Yeah. Home home court advantage to win Big West is big. Yeah. For sure. So Surprised they're doing that. All three teams. It's because they make money. Hawaii actually makes money hosting, whereas no one else does. And Are, they pay for everyone to come out there. And that's the thing, right? Like, if I mean, I guess if they're fine doing that. Yeah. I mean, it's the reason, like, we don't hold anything fun in any fun location ever in volleyball. Because we yeah. have no money, but I guess. Yeah, I don't want to pick Hawaii. It. You don't have to. <laughs> I don't like it. You want to trade picks? Right. You want to trade picks? You want to do Irvine? I'll go Hawaii? No. Pick your own picks. <laughs> <laughs> Speak your own truth. Uh, I, want, I want Irvine to win. I think Long Beach is going to win. And I <laughs> <laughs> need Hawaii to win. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sponsor me, Albert. Uh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where, that's where I stand. All right, Neva. Neva? I want McKendry to win. Yeah, don't we all Ooh. love that? I. Well, we want Nikki to win, is what we want. I mean, let's be clear. Yeah. How many McKendry matches are you going to watch this year? One. Can we get Two? Nick, let's get Nikki on the pod. I think Nikki needs to come on the pod. Probably. Uh, we were pretty, you know, full sheet of guests lined up, so mm-hmm. we'll probably squeeze around, though. After watching Loyola this weekend, I think Ohio State is going to win the Neva. Why? Rough. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because, uh... Let's, let's double-click on this. Love to. I mean, I don't know. I didn't think Parker looked super great this weekend. But I also, the the Hawaii win was a good win for them, but I think that they've got, like, a a little bit of, a a lot of decision-making that needs to happen. I think Ohio State has the best player in the Neva. With their outside, that's right. And that's that's where I'm at. I I want Loyal to win. I think... Ohio State's going to win. I'm going to go with Ohio State as well. I think Loyola has a lot of pieces. Like seeing them seeing them this weekend play play Hawaii, huge win for them in Hawaii. They were obviously banged up when they came to us at Stanford. Yeah. And still on night 2, we're able they the left that, that they brought in against us, he was darn good. Their setters were ripping serves. The freshmen were a little bit more up and down against us than they were against Hawaii. Um but they certainly certainly seems like they've got enough firepower to be able to string it together. And I didn't mind, like, night one against Stanford. It was most of a completely different lineup from Hawaii. So it was a very, like, 
full switch and seemed like there was a little bit of number one just kind of load management. Um, Mason Defunga was not happy. He wanted to see LeBron, a.k.a. Parker Van Buren, in the game. And he paid for his ticket, which was free, and he came all that way, and he wanted to see Parker. And <laughs> Parker was on the bench. He was not happy. Uh, so I, I don't mind what Hawks, Hawks did on that one, and it was close. If they would have split Hawaii and split Stanford, that would have been a great weekend for them. And they almost did it. Um, but I think it's, it's going to be a long long road and all they got to do is be able to beat Ohio State at the end. I still, or I would McKendry still. McKendry in the quarters. True, yeah. Or McKendry in the finals. Let's go, Nikki. Uh, <laughs> True. On. Is that who knocked him out last year? McKendry beat him yeah. in the quarters. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They've kind of had their number. How's Lewis this year? They went to five with Penn State in their first first weekend matchup. Um, so I'm sure, I'm sure they'll have some, they'll have something to say about it for sure. Yeah, I don't, I don't, they're kind, of the, they're kind of the Irvine of the Miva, I feel like. like oh, if they get that's hot, a great comparison. They a get hot at the end. Comparison. They're not going to be – I don't think they're going to be head and shoulders above anyone, but they could figure it out at the end and and work their way into the tournament. I love that. Lewis is the Irvine of the Miva. <laughs> well, Lewis just has more attitude than Irvine, though, like in, in a great way for any Lewis people that end up watching this. I like the Lewis attitude. They yeah, got some. They got gritty, gritty kids. Grittiest team in the country. It's for another episode. No, Chad's, we, we need Chad's meet for prediction first. Neediest dog in this garage. Coach Jackson is trying That's to That's one problem of the camera. We can't get Jackson on film. Yeah, we, we just need the uh, we need the we need, we need a camera up here. To look I figured down. you would have had one. You know, for you <laughs> making got TikToks. Three, and stuff. We've got three angles. Um, yeah, I think Miva. I mean, it's. I'd like to take Loyola or McKendry. I think it's probably Ohio State. Um, I don't know. I mean, I know Hawks is. It's a really tough schedule that they started, you know, for the first yeah. month, basically, right? Because yeah. BYU and then UCLA. Yep. Yep. <laughs> um, dog, come on. It's my turn to talk. Go away. Um, but, yeah, I mean, Peshawar is pretty impressive, and I just don't know who's going to be able to kind of get in their way. You know, but uh, I like to think Birch figures it out for that team this year. And, yeah. and they, didn't, they didn't really lose anyone that I can remember. Not that I can think all of. Their, pretty much all their main pieces are back, at least offensively. So, I mean, it'll – is it Wessel who's on the right? Yeah. It's the Florida guy? Yeah. Florida. Florida. yeah. Um, so, I mean, they got they got the pieces. Yeah. They for sure. Is there anyone that challenges Penn State in the UIVA? Are we getting in about Ball State, too? Ball State in the Miva, yeah. 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 I don't, I don't watch, know. I don't watch a lot of Ball State. They I got a, a couple guys. Their, their pin is legit. I'm blanking on his name. Genesis? 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 Genesis. Caleb Genesis? There you go. Yeah, Genesis. he's legit. I thought he graduated. Isn't he done? Did he graduate? I don't know. We can cut this. I'm pretty sure he graduated. Okay, all right, fair enough. But he was legit. <laughs> Shout out to that guy. I think Hope Donan, you're doing well. <laughs> I think Donan is good coming in like right away. But I yeah, don't we know are sleeping on. We're pieces, sleeping on Ball State. Yeah, I don't. I don't know where they. If they like picked up any freshmen or mm. I don't really remember. Yeah. Stanford plays them in two weeks. Oh, uh, where you'll know, Austin, Texas. Austin, Texas. Hope we're you going. love that. So that'll be. We'll, I'll, get the, I'll get the. I'll get the scout report. We're all going. We're, we're all going. We're it's all, all going. It's all, we're Should we film and podcast? On podcast. The road. Podcast in Texas. There we go. Thing. We're it's taking it on the road. That's so quick. We're filming our first episode. We're already going on the road. Show notes. We need to. We need to find out about Ball State. But all right, on to the Eva. Wait, hold on. Can we talk about the grittiest team really quick? Sure. Who do you, Who do you think the grittiest team in the country is? Hashtag LB Grit. No, that that can't be your answer. <laughs> it's not allowed to be your answer because you, they are self-proclaimed as the grittiest team. But Long Beach, are they? Is, though is Nick McCray. Nick McCray is the grittiest grittiest guy I know. You can't say boom really loud and be the grittiest <laughs> person you know. You're it's not boom allowed. baby. No, you're not allowed. Boom to be, baby. Nope. nope. <laughs> we love you, Nick. This is not shit talk. <laughs> uh, Actual grittiest team. hear Jackson drinking his water in the background again. Actual grittiest team. First thought that comes to head. Comes to <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just, just one beer. Specific. One beer, I promise. <laughs> First thought that comes to head. He's really nervous, guys. <laughs> Put that on the idioms that I mess up. <laughs> it's not an idiom. <laughs> <laughs> just talking. <laughs> it's actually normal words. Words are just hard. 
right. First thought that comes to my <laughs> mind. Thank you, you jerks. Uh, I'm going to go Grand Canyon. Oh, I like that answer. I'm going to go Grand Canyon. I love that answer, just because you think that Hick, Hitch, what? Hickman. Hickman. I just, I just love watching Jackson. Yeah, 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 yeah. That dude just wants to fight everyone. For sure. I love it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Grittiest player in the country, Hickman. Yeah. A great name for it, too. Great name. And Whirly. Whirly, yeah, that's fair. Man. I like that. I would really pick, like, if you talk about, like, last year, like, as we kind of work our way into this year, but uh-huh. I thought Penn State last year. Yeah, yeah. well, yeah. It's just like. Paul Bogner was like, gritty. That, well, that crew that had been yeah jackson mm-hmm. we're trying to talk about pennsylvania state <laughs> university uh i mean that crew that had been you know together for a number of years right and like yeah. just gone to battle a bunch like yeah that was that was cool to see them you know play some really tough matches yeah during the season for sure yeah them at hawaii them ucla cole bogner was my favorite setter last year might have been my favorite player to watch when we played them in texas i was like yeah sure. this guy's impressive yeah he was fully in charge um and he was undersized and did a lot of great things I like that. It's a good pick. It's not this year, but still, we'll allow it. Adjacent. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, well, if we're talking historically, like, no. Lewis has to be, like, yeah, up yeah. there. But I wouldn't say Lewis is, like, the gritty- grittiest team right now. If you pick Long Beach, I'm going to be so mad at you. <laughs> That's a dirtbag <laughs> move right there. No, I don't think it's Long Beach. Well, it's a good yeah, joke. What do you got? Long Beach baseball. Grittiest team right now. Some. Can I give my secondary answer? See some. Ooh. Oh, no. oh see some. Gritty. Don't hate that. You know what I like about that. You know what I like about CSUN? You're right. A lot of foreigners. They yeah, they find a lot of guys where it's like they're not the highest recruited player. Donovan. Gritty kid. Yeah, like, Donovan. Absolutely Donovan gritty Center, kid. For yeah, sure. Absolutely. Undersized, but like totally. plays with a chip on his shoulder, grinder, and does a ton of really good things. Yep. Is not the is not what you would picture as like the best player in that position, but constantly plays at no, a level that honestly, is Honestly, the Grand Canyon kid is just like that. What's who's their setter? Hickman. Oh, uh, uh, Nick Slight, yeah. That Nick's kid Light. is like the same as Donovan. Like, just same type of kid. Like, he, undersized setter, but just gritty. Yeah. Like, total gamer. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, Nick Slight. Nick Slight's a good representative of, yep. uh, of yep. the grit. Of the grit award. Yeah, but CSUN, I like them. I like what they, uh, I like what they do. They grind out a lot of games. Good answer. Also, Stanford, we've struggled against CSUN the past couple of years, so we need to. We gotta, we gotta find a way to beat the gritty. Beat the I, gritty I like those answers. Stop getting ace at Stanford. That's a good idea. Or I hope they miss their serves. I know Jones has his you know there. <laughs> over under forty two and a half missed serves yeah. tonight. Alex Jones's over under on missed serves is hilarious. Surprisingly accurate. He's, he's, so he's, so setting, accurate. he's setting the great lines. Yeah. So yeah. accurate. Because it feels like a lot, and then somehow it's like, no, we went to a fourth set. 47 missed serves. How? There, there was one UCLA game that we were at, and yeah. it was like the line was at 42 and a half, yeah. and it was at like 45 yeah. or yeah. something crazy. No, yeah. he, has, he has a gift for sure. Okay, where are we at? Uh, we still need e- EIVA. Oh. I'm going, I mean, I'm going, Penn, I'm going State. Penn State, but George Mason seems to uh, seems okay? to have seems to have a group that can that I'm not can, taking Mason. Can do it. I'd be interested to see how Pav reloads with Penn State. Yeah. Um, I do like. I mean, I watched a little bit of that Irvine one, and yeah. just like Mason was playing fast and like yeah. had had some dudes with arms, and then we were like playing some off speed and like had kind of, I don't know, modernized a little bit yeah. compared to what I would think of, I guess. Um, so that was kind of interesting, and obviously a nice win over Irvine. They were up two. They were rip. They were ripping yeah. serves against Irvine. They were up two zero on Santa Barbara, and then they lost it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 They went. They were up two zero in like convincing two zero. Yeah. And then. Joe Santa Wallace Barbara. stepped on the court and that must have been it. Was on the yeah, court definitely Joe. as well. I'll take I'll take George Mason. Yeah, I like that. What? Yeah. Really? I'll do it. I can see that. Totally. It's one of those ones where it's like I just don't know what Penn State has right now. What does Princeton have? Mm, Princeton. I forgot about Princeton. Sorry, Sebastian. Sam. No. <laughs> they got uh, in two years. Princeton's got Princeton's <laughs> worth got, it. <laughs> Princeton has some players yeah. for sure. For sure. Who do they have? Who does Harvard have right now? Brian Thomas, baby. Brian Thomas, obviously. Yeah, OH1. Uh, People are going to listen to this and be like, oh, the Beta Bay coaches are all talking about the Beta Bay kids. And <laughs> it's the only kid on Harvard uh, I can name. Weird. <laughs> I, I could see Princeton being in there for sure. Who do they have? They've got, uh, I'm blanking on names right now. Have do they have any fifth years? 
or did all of those kids graduate from that that group? That I do not know. Because if they have fifth years, then they've got the kid from Carolina UBC. I don't know if he's still there. I know Wedbush is. I know Wedbush is setting. I'm pulling. I'm pulling him up. Wedbush setting. They've got the uh, old MB Surf middle who had a really good freshman year. People are also going to listen to this and be like, "Can they do their research before they talk?" (laughs) No, it's our first episode. (laughs) Shut the hell up. (laughs) Cut us some slack. Just want to drink a beer. Volleyball started like two days ago. Nero. Nero. Nero's legit. I feel like we have it all the time with, with Princeton, though, right? Of like, oh, man, like the roster's like pretty strong. Hartley. That's what I was talking yeah, about. Yeah, Hartley's still on there. Hartley's like, good. They just, they Ryan, aren't like, they're not. knocking on the yeah. door. Like, is, is yeah. kind of my. I think they're close. They're probably, they're probably top three. I'd, I'd probably yeah, yeah. slate Mason as the two and, and Penn State as the one. With our massive sample size. Just because yeah. we've seen Mason and George haven't George Mason seen. to the moon. Yeah, well, I mean, hey, that's a pretty a full California swing. That was that was a lot of matches for them in a row, and to be able to sneak out a pretty good one against Irvine Mason was big. Whatever. And they could have they could have gone they could have gone Santa Barbara, Irvine, and they beat Northridge, but lost to no they I forget who they beat San Diego. You can make it up because I'm not going to know. That's fair. Kay. Could have been a great weekend. Okay, pl- predictions for Player of the Year. Ooh, okay. No respect for the Carolinas. I respect that. <laughs> Disrespect. True. Um, Name the Carolinas. North Carolina. South, South Carolina. Carolina. <laughs> what kind of question is that? <laughs> it was easier than I think you thought yeah, it was. That's all. That's all. <laughs> Sweet Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, no one's, okay. No one's going right, to listen to this. Chad, right, Chad start us year. off. Player of the year. Who you got? Player of the Oh, man. Do they decide player of the year before the NCAA semifinals? Uh, they must, I right? know what they do in the women's game. I don't know what they do in the men's game. Good in question. the in the women's game, they meet, say. they come up with it, then the semifinals happens, and then the player of the year is the next morning, and if something crazy happens that night, they all meet again in the morning, and then... Let's just say they decide it before the semifinals. That way it's not like you have to reach the finals. Yeah, okay, so it's not like a winner kind yeah, of yeah. thing. I, it's going to be somebody from UCLA, and I think it's got to be Rowan because everybody else is just such an equal slice of that pie. Like, you can you can undersell, like, Knight and, and, and Champlin and these guys, but, like, they do their role really, really well, yeah. right? And so Rowan really facilitates that and is, you know, obviously the one touching the ball the most. So I think he's going to naturally yeah. get looked at for that award. So that would be... That would be my pick right now. Good pick. Great I think that's. Pick. I think that is. If you were, if, if Jones was here setting odds in Vegas, I think I think Rowan would have the best odds. I think it's fair. The reason I asked about the semis is like if Irvine does push, Heno could be that guy, because uh-huh. that that guy's ceiling is is pretty stupid. Um, he's always bigger than I I think he's gonna be. I'm yeah. Like oh he's got to be six four. He's like no it's like six seven six eight. Like yeah. he's a big guy. He's a big dude. Yeah. yeah. Probably the best serve in the country. Oh, easily. Yeah. Not even close. Who you got? First off, Keone's serve is the best serve in the country. But no. Incorrect. No. Keone's serve is, might be the fastest, but Heno's is the most Heno's consistent. And that lefty spin and his ability to change depth is it's, ridiculous. It's very good. You're right. It's yeah. ridiculous. You want me to go? Yeah, you're up. Would you like to go last? <laughs> Rotman, done. Which one? Player of the year. Alex, the, Will, Dave, the, Steve, Dave. <laughs> Danny. Dave Robin. <laughs> Danny Dave Robin. Ro- <laughs> Dave Robin. Dave <laughs> Robin. Player of the year. He's overdue. <laughs> Will Robin, player of the year. Okay. Dark horse pick for player of the year. I like. I like that. Hype up hype up my book. Hype up my Stanford guys. I can see it. Stanford gets an at large and wins to get into the final four. And Rotman gets player of the year. Okay. You heard it here first. If UCLA does something stupid this year. Like, UCLA's got to not be undefeated going into it. Obviously, Rowan is the top, like, contender in it. But if UCLA has, like, a blunder game and a half, then if Stanford can get into the Final Four, I think Robin gets player of the year. Mm -hmm. He's going to be the one to do it. Okay. I like that. Chad hinted at mine. Hanno. I'm going. I'm going ahead. I think he's the serve, attack, pass, 
he's the dude for Irvine. If yeah. Irvine figures it out, I think they I think they can go far. Statistically speaking, if we're gonna volley dork it, his serve is probably the biggest plus minus across the NCAA in any capacity. You just need him at the service line as many times as you possibly can get. Uh, and it's not like a I think Keone's serve is ridiculous as well, but it's not just a grip it and rip it, ace or miss. It is yeah. consistent pressure, and he will move it around so well. And then they run him out of the back row almost immediately every yes. single time they get a they get a transition and he scores. Crazy. So uh, yeah, I'm going Heno. Heno for Heno for player of the year. I like Heno. I also love Rotman. It's a great pick. It's a great pick. All right, what's next on our docket here? Freshman of the year. Ariel already hinted at it, so you can start us off. Let's uh, let's reconfirm that. I got Fred as freshman of the year. I think that he's going to get the shot to lead Hawaii, and they have a likely chance of getting in. Mm -hmm. And as a freshman, to do that, I don't know if anybody, any other freshman, I didn't name some. I didn't watch much A team game. Coach and seven teams. Like I just we, we didn't I mean, we didn't overlap. Jake Reed looked pretty good this weekend. Mm -hmm. uh, I got Tread over Shobel, and mm -hmm. who else? I mean, who are we missing? Like Lanchette came out early. Yeah, oh, so sure. that was the one that I was gonna say. The other the other player that could I All think Tread I think Tread is the is already kind of established as the guy. I don't know if Lanchette's fully established. We haven't really seen. They kind of ran a couple different lineups in their first round matches against the HBCUs. What about attackers? But like, yeah, I'm not sure. But Blanchett was the guy I was going to say is kind of the next, the other pick. I think if he's the guy for USC and USC has a has a decent year, um, that will be a, a, a huge piece, uh, a huge piece for that team, no doubt. Uh, Chad, do you have a pick for freshman of the year? I mean, I. I I agree. I mean, Tread's probably in the best position to do that. Yeah. Coupled with the fact that I can't name any others. <laughs> I there's there's, a, there's a I freshman we're definitely forgetting. I'm sure. That's, that's going to gonna have a, a breakout year. I'm sure there's a kid who's, you know, not a Balboa guy or something that, you know, <laughs> was in gold, was all world, and we're just not. Like a wave kid or something. Probably. Yeah, yeah like Wes, Wes Smith or something like that. Ooh, there, 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 see, there, there you go. go. There you go. You're welcome, viewers. Yeah, yeah. there it is. Wes Smith, that's a good call. Like a wave kid. That is a like Wes Smith. He, he, he seems to be a little bit of a problem. Yeah, seriously. for sure. I'll take Wes, man. Yeah, yeah, there you yeah go. that's a good great pick. one. I'm not taking USC, but I'll take Wes. Yeah, yeah. I, I know like he was banged. He was banged up all through Aiden's year. If he can stay healthy, for sure, he's gonna get a lot of. He's gonna get a lot of a lot of chances as well. That was a great. Sorry. Spiral <laughs> of. Hey, we figured it out. Nice we work, did, everyone. Yeah. Good job. Scenic route, but we got there. Before we move on, do you need to make another martini? No. Next Wednesday. Next on the docket. I can, slow, I can slowly go into this. We have a whole weekend of drinking we're about to embark on. The next question. Prediction for most improved team. Most improved team. Who do we have? I'll go first. I think it's going to be Stanford. That's what I was going to say. Okay. Same. You want to go first? No drama here. I agree. Just watching. To the moon. A doc's gone, so obviously a big improvement. Yeah, <laughs> addition by subtraction, doc. I'm not even going to go anywhere <laughs> near that, obviously. Um, just kidding, doc. We love you. Just kidding. Completely just kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. Addition by subtraction for us, because then we added we you to us. We love that. <laughs> Ipso facto. <laughs> no, I mean, just like how, how fast they were playing, just how things seemed to kind of, it just seemed more balanced and just better. I don't know. Like good vibe and the spread, yeah, yeah, and little little six two action in there. Ross getting in there to serve mm -hmm. a little bit. Um, no, it was it was good. And then, you know, you have Will, Alex, and and Lamp right. You know, to go for for those two spots. So that's pretty pretty deadly. Yep, yep. it's a good problem to have. Yep, there's some there's some we got some depth, we got some options, and the boys are yeah they're certainly they're playing well. Litsky, I think. Litsky's doing a really good job. It's it's our ability to be consistent throughout the course of the season. That's the that's the thing we've got to continue to prove. But I could I could certainly see ourselves in that category, not making the tournament the past couple of years, being close. Um, I like that. Ariel, do you have a do you have a pick beyond Stanford? 
Is he on Stanford a most improved team? Mm -hmm. Irvine, maybe? Okay. They're kind of in the same boat. As, yeah, as the actually, I don't, know. I, don't know if you, I don't know if yeah. you can say Irvine with the loss of... Uh, Sonny. Sonny. Oh, man. So, I mean, if that's they had, if they a, had Sonny... That's then, such a tough yeah. loss. Like, Stanford didn't lose anybody that big, so, like, you can't say Irvine. Um, I could see USC being much improved with, sure. with what they have. USC or Grand Canyon. I mean, Grand Canyon was good last year, but Grand Canyon's looking. Well, I mean, like Grand Canyon was a tournament team last year, for sure. But and they they still have Diane. What does improved mean? Does improved mean makes the tournament that didn't last year? No, I just mean biggest jump from where they were at last year. It's probably some Carol South Carolina, probably <laughs> Charleston. Let's ride. <laughs> Something in the Carolinas is probably making improvements, right? For sure. Or George Mason. Honestly, yeah. Oh, that's Honestly, a good George, one, maybe. George Mason, yeah. That's, that was where my head was going to go. Are we just angling to get on his podcast? Or, like, what's going on here? Does he have one? Yeah, he's on. Like, well, like, he's on Bosak? with, like. Yeah, but he's on with, like, uh, Sparrow yeah, and those Rob guys. Rob on the mic. Oh, really? Uh, I mean, Dan's on all the time. Uh, I don't watch it. Theo's on it quite mm -hmm. a bit. Just, like, nobody's going to watch ours. So it's, <laughs> it's great. <laughs> We're just shouting into the abyss. <laughs> they just need to drink more beers on theirs, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Problem solved. George Mason, I like. I like that pick. Sure. I'm gonna go with USC. I think USC is gonna be gonna be much improved. It'll be unfortunate for from Stanford from where they were last year. No, I think that'll be a good battle. I think that I think the MPSF is actually very strong. Big West is currently has more like high rankings, but honestly, Big West did not have a great starting weekend in comparison. It's fair. Right? Hawaii Hawaii loses one to Loyola. Irvine yeah. loses to George Mason. I think that that's gonna even out a little bit come next rankings. But I, I do think the MPSF is actually just as strong as the Big West right now. BYU is going to be legit still. Um, Grand Canyon lost one of their pins, but they still have the majority yeah. of that core. And they USC, have Flexen. USC, Not Flexen. No. Flexen went to Irvine. Jared got, Anderson. Uh, fly, I mean, Eagles, fly. He got, he got, got a little bit anything, of time. He got yeah. a little bit of time. Yeah, I don't know. I didn't see if he played or not. Like at the end of the third. Um, yeah, I think they kept it because Gianni's still on the right for them. Yeah, but yeah, I think I think the MPSF is gonna be pretty well loaded. I think there's UCLA. There's like a midsection of everybody else. UCLA is a juggernaut. Then there's a there's a selection of contenders. I'd say there's a selection of like. What does contenders mean though? Like tournament teams. Yeah. Like sure. Like, like for sure contending to be in the tournament. Um. Yeah. And then so there's a couple tiers there. We should make a we'll make a tier ranking of on the whiteboard. Yeah, we'll do something like that. I'll go with uh I'm gonna go with USC. That's gonna be my pick. That's a good pick. For most improved. USC. USC for most improved. Predictions for biggest loser of 2024. Biggest loser. Yeah, what do you mean? Not by this teams. This was yeah. Wait in parentheses. Not teams, but a concept. Yes, and then I, I love that. I had a specific. I'll lead off because I had a specific thought. We're not. We're not here to bash teams. We love bashing teams. Couple sure, teams. you may. We may love it, but we're not going to record it. To we're not here to. We're not here to broadcast as bashing teams. We're not sure yet. You guys ready for my we're my concept? Biggest loser. This is this is something that pissed me off last year. Ooh. Video challenge. Biggest loser of the 2024 season. Hmm. The video challenge is killing me. It takes 140 seconds Stan minimum okay. to review. It's really specific. Yeah, it is. But talk it, about talking shit. The Stanford video review is the most egregious thing. It is double the amount of time than yeah. every other. It school. takes like seven minutes to, to try and do a challenge. It's I insane. timed it last year, and I was like, "Oh my goodness, what are they playing this but, on?" But that is not the only like that's that happens all the time. So video review, that's my biggest loser. We got to find a better way. We got to find a better way for video review. There needs to be like a time limit. Like, all right, 120 yeah, seconds is it? That's all you wasn't get definitive to review. Within 60 seconds. Yeah, Honestly, exactly. It wasn't clear enough. Then we're Sorry. done. Then we're done. I can but, buy that concept. But thus far, it's been literally they review the you challenge. They review the entire play. That's what they do. They go through and they're that's looking at every single so little part. That make and it sense. takes forever. So that's my biggest loser. We got to find better ways for video review. I, I mean, I don't know what's out there that's cheap enough. I know. I mean, that's, that's why I'm like. That's why I like the time limits. Like, tell me exactly where I need to be looking, and I'm gonna look for the, try and spend my time on that exact point. Is it a net positive, at all? Like. Or would you just get rid of it in its current form? 
I want to get rid of it. I think video ch- there's this there's a need to, to be able to challenge. I think that is good, but yeah. but we can't spend s- seven minutes like it, literally last year we were rec- yeah, we, we were it. taking think, the average time. I think that it was like six and a half minutes that I recorded and then showed it to John and we all were like, oh my god. Yeah. They did add in a new rule this year. You have you only get eight seconds to challenge. So when the play is over, yeah, whistle right. blows eight mm-hmm. seconds because there was there was issues at like BYU or Hawaii where the, you, coaches just look up to the screen and like totally. wait for the replay yeah. and then challenge before yeah. the serve. So they added they added that in. Have you seen the video of my dad throwing the child card? There's a video of my dad and you like see ninja star somebody or? during the like right when the whistle blows, you see this card in the film like go up and it accidentally like took wind and like went up and over the net and like flew onto the other side and then he got a card for throwing and then it got stuck in someone's neck it was (laughs) it was (laughs) that's where i thought we were going and i was like i'm here for that one it was i'll send you the video of it it's so funny prediction for the newest trend in men's volleyball this season the late six two i like the late six two Honestly, was one of the things that I thought about as well. Mm-hmm. Seen it, seen it in a couple couple settings. There seems to be some pretty good depth in a couple teams it makes that sense. have the ability to do it. You uh, you get you get those three front row attackers. You get in a little bit of a different. The thing that I like about it from Stanford perspective, you get you get that serve too. Like yeah. especially when your setter has a better serve. Don't get me wrong, Moses' serve can be effective. But T's got a better serve on the jump serve. So, like, being able to switch that is pretty nice. So you're saying yep. death to the D-ball. <laughs> is that what we're implying? Depends on who you, depends no, I don't on think, what your team you are. Yeah, I don't think men's volleyball can't be death to the D-ball because of the international sub role. Because of you people have like Parker. And you can't, but if you have a team that yeah. you, you just don't have enough subs. You don't have enough subs to do it. You well, have to have I mean, it. The late 6-2 is interesting for a team that has a medium right side or, like, somebody who isn't super defensive at all or some like mm-hmm. there's some holes there like you're able to cover th- some things up with the 6-2. Yeah. It's a little sh- sketchy on the rhythm, but I don't mind it. Mm-hmm. It just depends on who your team is. Yeah. I think we're going to see more creativity offensively, maybe defensively, I don't know. I don't know what that is anymore <laughs> necessarily. Because, like, I'm already seeing, like, so Brinkley and Static join NIF staff, right? Yep. And so the uh, the Georgia Mason match I pulled up, Power is already, like, sliding into the, you know, like, basically, like, 5-6, like, dead mm-hmm. center almost. The same crap that Brinkley was doing. Yep. They're just taking the line, and he's, like, playing middle back. Yeah. Um, so maybe maybe there'll be more of that. But offensively, I think you'll see more routes that look the same but have different endpoints, mm-hmm. right? So, like, you see it with, like, pop and float stuff with the middles. But the same way that, like, RPOs and football or something of just yeah. like, hey, look, it all looks like this, and then I get to make a decision. Or, you know, I don't know, like, quarterback keep, like, I can hand it or I can take it. Like, that kind of stuff of just like, all right, I can decide am I going to be here or am I going to be there. And, I mean, blockers just don't. Yeah. You're just outmatched, right? Yeah. And, and so at some point, using the football metaphor, right, like, the receiver knows where the receiver's trying to run to. The cornerback doesn't, and they're always going to play catch-up, right? So yeah. if you can show them something that, you know, and maybe this is almost cyclical in volleyball, right? Because, like, they used to have, like, a swing hitter, right? Like, you pass middle and, like, do I hit left or do I hit right? Yeah. I don't know. We'll see. Um, and maybe maybe it's kind of just, like, a, a trend to just move back to back to the forefront. Maybe not swing hitter, but, like, just that idea. Like bell bottoms. I'd love to see a swing hitter. Sure. It's, like, <laughs> disco and all that kind of stuff. You know, vintage is cool. Who knows? I don't think that I, like that I don't think that this is a trend for this year, but it's a trend of the last couple of years is the undersized setters just become more of a trend. Mm-hmm. Like people don't really so there are some coaches that don't look for the size anymore. They don't care. Yeah. Like it's just like yeah, the big the big setter used to be the it's yeah. like I'll take the biggest setter I can yeah. get. And then that didn't work out for some of the big setters yeah. and or some of the teams and I think the undersized setter has been a trend over the last half a decade 
Yeah. Yeah, that under yeah, certainly undersized setter that just locates and is a gamer. Is a that gamer. Plays mm -hmm. volleyball well. May mm -hmm. not be the best blocker. May not be the most defensive, but like can get it all done. Certainly makes sense. Is that, um, the, is that the end of the Loy Ball era then? Right. Yeah, it's you like have, you have coaches that grew up kind of in that era, right? It's like, hey, it's a big guy. Give me the biggest dude possible. Biggest lefty setter that you can find. Yeah, just tall. Yeah, tallest, tallest dude that can clog up the clog up the right side. And now it's just like what's the super phys like athletic kid that can kind of jump, but like yeah. jump well enough. And I mean, even like the the Joe Carlos's, right? right. It's yeah. like hey, I'm just gonna exactly. wheel and deal. Yep. Yeah, the Irvine's the perfect example of it right now. Sheward, yep. Carlos. Yeah, even last year with Dylan's eye, like just undersized setters yeah. that kind of just mm -hmm. could fling the ball around, for sure. There's a lot of undersized setters. Yeah, well, there are just not that many like six eight humans, yeah. let alone people that hey, the coach decided to make me a setter yeah. when I was fourteen, not outside or middle or whatever. Yep, yep, so. yep, totally. I'm going with one that we've already somewhat hinted at, and I think it will become a trend this year, but it is the serving sub starting on. Subbed out, coming back late. So he started with so, that. So we talked about it with Niff and Irvine. He had Connor Dom start in, and Connor played middle and outside in club, so he like has experience with it. But he has a good serve, and so he starts him as the first server, or starts him as like the if they back rotate, he starts on as mm -hmm. a middle, and then he'll back rotate to serve, and then they'll use him again at the end of a set to get another round, just knowing men's volleyball wise how important the ability to get your best servers back to the line more often than not i think that's going to become more of a trend i've seen charlie do it as hawaii well did it with yeah Keone. yeah Ch charlie's done it as well for hawaii i think that's something we'll see more of is just creative ways to maximize the subs that you do get um you're able to get another half rotation but it's risky right like just like we saw with irvine connor go goes in to serve they end into a, they go into a deuce game. He gets front row. He's now playing middle blocker at the end of the fourth set, yeah. right? So you, you, it's a little bit of a risk, but I think I think the reward is there if you have a server that truly makes sense. Keone being one of them, um, that that could be that could be a trend that for sure Jackson, continues on. Jackson, mm -hmm. do you have a, a closing that you'd like to throw in there? We can cut all. Should we pray. <laughs> <laughs> This podcast is brought to you by <laughs> Athletic Greens. Oh, Cue the music. Fun. Here we go. No. There you go. Listen to that. We got the music queued up. You can, you're the only one that hears it right now. Chad and I have no idea. It's just this random music. I like it. Someone that's a listener, make us a theme song. Yeah, we don't like this music.